family. Today we're going to learn about telling time. And you have seen me at calendar time since the beginning of school. We've already learned a lot about telling time. And hopefully you've been practicing at home in your practice book and on Think Central. So let's review. The first kind of clock is called what? What is this? That's right, it's an analog clock. The other kind of clock is this kind. What's this called? That's right, it's a digital clock. Now, how can you tell the difference? On the analog clock, you can see we have hands. This is the hour hand, it's shorter. And the minute hand is longer. And we call this the face. It's got numbers on the clock up to 12, one to 12. On a digital clock, we do have minutes too, but they look like this. And here is the hour. So why on earth do we need to tell time? Talk to your mom or dad or your brother and sister. Why do we need to tell time? Why is it so important to learn this concept? Here's a circle map of why it's important of telling time. And maybe when this video is done, you would like to make a circle map of your own of why it's important to tell time. I said one reason is we got to get to school and if we can't tell time, we don't know if we're on time to school or not. For grown-ups, it might be getting to work on time. And we need to know when breakfast, lunch, and dinner is. It's important to tell time to know when these are. Or maybe you want to know when your favorite show is on. And you need to be able to tell time to do that. We definitely follow a schedule at school. And some of your moms and dads also have a schedule for homeschool. You probably have a bedtime. And you needed to be able to tell time for that. When you go to the doctor or dentist, they give you an appointment time. And you better be on time to the doctor or dentist. Some of you, not right now, but you've had play dates. And we'll have play dates in the future. And you usually have a set time. It's important to know what time you need to be there. Okay, so let's practice on our analog clock, which we practiced at calendar time. Again, the long arm is called the minute hand. The short arm is called the hour hand. And when it's Touching the 12, we say o'clock. And this hand is pointing to the four. So we say four o'clock. Now I'm going to turn my clock over because on this side it shows that every number is counting by five. So we're going to practice that. So let's start with the one, five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. That means there's 60 minutes in an hour. Now, if our time goes halfway around the clock, halfway would be the sixth. We would say that's 30 minutes past the hour. Okay, time to practice some times. Let's see how good you are. All right, what time is it? Let's try this time. And what's this time? Now in first grade, we learned how to tell time to the hour, which we just practiced. And then time to the half hour or half past. Now what's tricky is the hour hand is getting ready 
going to be the next hour. So it moves a little bit in between. So remember, if we count by fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, now we're on 30. It's not quite on the 11. That means it's 10, 30. Let's see if you can try some now. Remember, the minute hand isn't moving on 30. What time is it now? About here. Let's try one more. What time is it here? Now, you can still practice counting by the minute. So, if our clock moved like this, we would say, you always start with the hour, eight, and we count by fives, eight, oh, five. And if it moved one more, now it's eight, ten. Now it's eight, fifteen, five, ten, fifteen. Some people say that quarter past. Now if we move to the six, remember that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. It's 8, 30. And some people say half past 8. Now it's getting closer to 9, but it's not 9 yet. And it's going to move now to the 9. Not nine yet. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, eight, forty-five. And some people say quarter to nine. It's almost nine o'clock. In this picture, you can see the clock is cut in half and then half again. So now we have one, two, three, four pieces. We call each piece a quarter. So this piece is five, 10, 15 minutes past or quarter past. Halfway is half past or we say 30 minutes past. And then this quarter, we say quarter minutes Till or quarter two? Okay, I have two questions for you. And I want you to either write some answers down or you can talk with whoever's at home. What would take an hour to do? So think about that and talk with your family. What could take an hour? The second question is, what could take one minute to finish? Think about and discuss with family and then I'll show my answers. Okay, your question was, what would take an hour to, to do something? I said, going to the grocery store might take an hour. If you went on a bike ride around your neighborhood, that might be about an hour. Or cooking Cooking and eating dinner might take about an hour as well. Okay, if you would like to make a clock, I'm going to show you how. You will need, um, here's a finished one. You will need a paper plate. I have two different kinds. Either will work. You'll need markers or crayons or both. Markers or crayons. Some kind of paper, white paper that you can color sign, or if you have construction paper. And then you also need scissors. And this is part of my markers. You might need either, I used a screw would work, or a tack, and maybe um, a piece of a eraser, or even some Play-Doh. So next, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, take a marker and on your plate, you're going to number it. 
But there's a special way to number a clock. We're going to start with 12. But at the top, I'm going to write 12. One and a two. Across from it, we're going to write six. So right across is a six. Then on this side, the right side, we're going to write a three. And then across from the three, I'm going to write a nine. Now we're ready to fill in the numbers. So after 12, it starts with one. And then two. Three is already there. Four. Five. Six is there. Seven. Eight. Nine is there. Ten. Eleven. Now, I added some decorations to mine. I did flowers and just some pretty lines. You can decorate if you want to, too. Just don't decorate on top of your numbers so we can clearly see them. Next, I'm going to draw on two different colors of paper. I'm going to draw an arrow. Let me show you how to draw an easy arrow. So one needs to be long and one needs to be short. So all I do is do a triangle and then I do a rectangle. Now for the other one, my next one needs to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do a triangle again and then a small rectangle. And then you cut them out. Okay, I have my arrows. Now make sure one is short and one is long. I'm going to trim mine a little bit, and that's pretty easy to do. I want my hour hand to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to trim it a little bit. Next, you might need a grown-up to help. I'm going to take my push pen, or if you have a screw, or if you actually have a brad, a fastener, you can use that. So now I'm going to poke a hole. Don't poke your fingers. And I'm going to poke it into my plate. Make sure it's about in the middle. Okay, now we have a pokey end. That's where an eraser comes in handy. And mom or dad can cut a piece for you, or if you have Play-Doh, that would probably be even better. So I cut just a little piece of my eraser so that I can poke it in and it won't poke me. Now I have my hour hand and my minute hand, and I can tell time. There's your clock. Happy crafting. Okay, in conclusion, we reviewed analog clock and digital clock. Analog clock is very important to learn in everyday life because we need to get to our activities. And it actually shows us the passing of time. So keep on practicing those clocks. You're going to be using them for the rest of your lives. See you next time.